What's going on guys? Thanks for coming back to the channel guys. As always, it's good to see you here watching these videos. Now what I wanna talk about today guys is getting more contracts under contract. How to increase your conversion rate, how to communicate better, how to build a better report. So first thing is I'm gonna go through three different talking points on how people make decisions. I'm gonna give you a couple case studies on how to think about this so it's gonna make sense. And then over here, I'm gonna give you three little techniques at the end, right before the contract sign, if you have some competition on that transaction, how to make that homeowner feel more comfortable working with you and not another investor. Now guys, I built my business direct to the homeowner, direct to the motivated seller. I didn't buy houses off the MLS. Now I did a few deals off the MLS, but it was never my main core strategy. I didn't really buy from auctions and things like this. So I basically built my business direct to the seller. So I've had a lot of time communicating back and forth with homeowners. I've got a lot of good contracts under contract throughout my life. And I wanna talk about some of the things I do as far as the mentality I go into conversations and how I proceed through the conversation to hit on the things that I know that person's trying to be touched on for them to make a decision, if that makes sense. Okay, so I'm gonna write these down real quick, guys. I'm just gonna put them down here real quick. Money, time, and emotion, okay? So I kind of ruined my plan. I was gonna go one by one by one, but I think I'm just gonna do it like this. So people make decisions based off money, time, and emotion. Now, let me give you an example here real quick. So let's say two real estate investors or real estate agents go do a transaction. They come out of closing. They both got a $25,000 check. Who made more money? Both walked out with a $25,000 check. They'll put that check into their bank account. It's going to say $25,000 if they had zero in it before. Who actually made more money, right? Who made more money? The person who had the lower amount of time allocated to do that deal. So let's say you both picked up a 25 k check but one of you guys spent a whole year doing the flip project. Was a nasty nightmare, right? And the other one did this in a month. Quick, easy, paint carpet, in and out. Because of time allocation involved in that process, one made more money than the other one. So people make decisions based off money in relationship to time and time in relationship to money. Now let's say <clears throat> you have two different individuals and they put the exact same time into the deal. Somehow they could do this where they made the same amount of money, exact same amount of time, but one of them had a deal that had some crazy contractors stealing from them and making their life hell. They had all sorts of crazy interactions with the title company and it was just a crazy stressful deal. And the other one went smooth as can be from start to finish. Same time amount into the deal, same dollar amount, but they had a different emotional um, outcome on how they went through that transaction. Bad deal, good deal, right? Emotionally stressful, not emotionally stressful. Now, why does this impact your income and why does this impact the way people make decisions? Because sometimes, if you do things that cause more stress, this compounds into other areas of your life. You take this back to your family, you take this back to your other businesses, your partners and your employees, and then it causes more problems, it slows down and everything doesn't work and flows and won't work and flow the way it should throughout the day when you're in a negative mindset as compared to a positive mindset. So you're doing a lot of rework and cleaning up behind your messes that you make when you're in a bad, upset, negative mood, if that makes sense. <clears throat> so it's always money, time, or emotion. Now, when you're talking to a homeowner, what you need to understand is most people think about money, right? So sometimes you're gonna go make them an offer. What if you can't afford or you don't have the ability to make them an offer that's gonna put more money in their pocket? What if you can show them that you can do this faster? You can do it quicker. You can avoid them headaches, right? So I'm always trying to show people one of these three things that I can do in relationship to my competition. If they can give them a better offer, I can show them how I can do it faster with less stress. If they can't give them a better offer and they're trying to say they can do it faster with less stress, I'm gonna show them how I can give them more money, right? So you're always trying to play on one of these three things. So as you're going through your presentations, guys, either always think about how you can show them how they're gonna get the income or the dollar amount they want for the property or how you can increase this, giving them multiple offers, giving an owner financing offer and a cash offer or multiple owner financing offers how you can do this quicker, how you, can, how you can show them that you can get it done faster than other people are gonna do this for them, and also how you can avoid the stress and headaches. One of the big things people don't wanna deal with is which is why they're selling their house to a quick uh, cash offer house buying company is they don't want the stress. They want quick, in and out, no stress, and they're willing to trade a piece of their equity for, for doing so. Now, <clears throat> when you come over here, guys, three things that you guys can do to increase the likelihood that that homeowner is gonna have uh, feel comfortable working with you are number one, get them in touch with your title company. Title company, okay? Your lender and testimonials. Okay, now I know very few people can probably read that, right? But you heard what I said. Lender, title company, and testimonials. So let's say that you're going for a house contract and there's a couple other investors, right? 
What I usually do is say, hey, look, you know, we have an incredible track record. We've never asked somebody to drop their price before closing. What I'd like to do is I'd like to get you in contact with my title company. This is a third party insured, a third party insured company that's not gonna have any ability to try to influence you in another way except tell you the truth, which is I close transactions all the time at their company and I never ask for price reductions, right? And so you have a good working relationship with your title company. Some of you guys may be entitled attorney states, same thing. Get them in touch with your closing agent, right? Get them in touch with this person that they can validate and say, hey, look, this is a good person. They've done a lot of business here through my office and they always do what they're gonna say and they always bring the money to closing. This is gonna put their tensions at ease. Second thing is the lender, right? Why not go ahead and get your lender to talk to this homeowner if they're right there on the fence? Because one of the big things that people wanna know is will they get the check at closing? All they wanna know is that they're gonna show up, they're gonna get their money, they can do this hopefully with a little, the least amount of time, the least amount of stress possible and move on to the next part of their life. And by sometimes getting that homeowner in touch with your lender, that's gonna confirm, yeah, I've done a lot of loans for this individual. Um, just, you know, just like think about the sales side, right? Why do people need proof of funds? It's a very similar thing for them. It makes them feel comfortable, especially if you guys are a little bit younger like I was when I started out in the business and I'm making half a million dollar offers in my 20s. People wanted to know that I'm gonna come close on that property. And then the last one is testimonials. If you guys have already done deals, right? And you've already got people that you're working with or that you've worked with in the past, that could film a testimonial. Give them the testimonial videos. Also, maybe even let them, if you have someone that's a close relationship to you that you did a really good job with, so do something nice for them where maybe they'll hop on a call from time to time with the homeowner where they'll actually validate that, hey, yes, this person did a good job for me and they did what they said. They, they did exactly what they said they were gonna do, exactly how they said they were gonna do it. So those three little tips at the end, guys, helping them talk to your title company or title attorney, your lender, and showing them testimonials, as well as when you go through your rapport building process, showing them how they can increase their income or you can give them a better offer, show them how they can free up time or do this quicker than other investors, and also do it in a way that there's less stress. I assure you guys, you're gonna get a lot more contracts, guys. I hope this helped, and see you on the next one.